Hello and welcome to episode 66 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is September 21st, 2020. And today I'm dressed all in crochet. I know the two pieces don't fit together perfectly color-wise, but I just felt like all the crochet and all the granny squares today. So I'll start with my shawl as usual and as you can see it's not a granny square but it's a granny triangle so basically it's half a granny square and um, I crocheted this in 2015 so it's fairly old but I love it and I used three balls of opal sock yarn to crochet this and it, it was three balls of different colors so each ball had lots of colors in it and these were three different ones if you're curious you can um, check out my Ravelry page I show the three balls that I used for this shawl and what I did is I alternated um, the balls of yarn every round so I a row so I do one row color one then the next row color two then the next color three and then one again two three and I just mix them completely up and it was an experiment and at first I wasn't quite sure whether it would work out but um, it's easy to try these things because the beginning of the shawl is really small and you can just see how the colors mix. And I really loved it. From the very beginning, I was just fascinated how the colors played together. And uh, even though there's a lot of colors in here, I'm really happy with how they look. And it only took me nine days to crochet the shawl. And I think the main reason was I was just so curious to see what the next row would look like and what color would come from that bowl and then from the other and so on and I just loved it. So this is the shawl, the old shawl and the dress I'm wearing is of course very new. It's the um, crochet dress Promise designed by Heather from HG Designs Crochet and the pattern for this dress is going to be released this weekend. Um, as soon as possible I will link my project page to the pattern page on Ravelry so you can go and get your own pattern and right now I think you can win a pattern on uh, Instagram so if you go on Instagram you look for Heather or you look for my profile and you um, click through to her profile and then you'll see how you can win a copy of the pattern of this beautiful dress and now I'll stand up again and I'll show you so last week I showed you the finished dress before it was washed and I was just holding it up and now it's been washed and um, I'm really really happy with it and this is what it looks like with me in it and I'll just step on my chair and let you see whoops so this is how long it is it's a fairly long dress I'm really really happy with um, how it fits it's the perfect size for me so the notes in the pattern were really helpful to figure out what size to make and um, yeah I'm happy with the colors I picked if I'd been at home I probably used a lot more colors but because I was on holiday and uh, had to buy the yarn there I um, just chose six different colors that I thought looked together nicely and I'm really very happy with um, how it turned out and also after washing I just put um, put it down flat to dry and um, yeah it's kept its shape and it's um, I crochet very loosely to get the gauge that was in the pattern but I think that's what makes it drape so nicely and also it makes it feel softer than, than uh, crochet can sometimes feel and I'm really really happy and I'm pretty sure it won't be the last time I've crocheted this pattern and uh, and I'm already thinking about what colors to use next time and I think next time I won't do a cotton dress but I'll do um, I'll use some wool yarn to make a warm dress for winter then probably I'll do longer sleeves as well and I can't wait to do it again or I might crochet one of her other designs <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm really happy with the dress and um, if you like it too, I can only encourage you to get the pattern and crochet your own dress. So that's what I'm wearing. Now on to finished objects. I have one um, project that had been finished before or almost finished. Maybe I should take this off again. 
Um, and that's my brioche square something. <laughs> so basically I, I knit a brioche, a brioche square and because of the way I put the increases, it didn't really come out like a proper square, but um, the increase line spiral around the middle, which makes the middle look really nice, I think. But um, yeah, but the corners are not really, really straight or anything. So this is what the corners look like. And now what I've done is I folded in half. That's what I had meant to do all along is fold it in half and then just sew two seams. So I sewed this bit together and I sewed this bit together and I created two armholes. And because of the funny, funny edges um, or corners, I didn't sew right up to the corner because it would, would have been really difficult to figure out where to put the seam. So I thought it'd be fun to let those round edges hang. And uh, I went a few stitches in and I started the seam there. And now it's this kind of shrug that I had wanted to do. So I can put my arms through those armholes and um, it doesn't fit with this dress at all. I'll wear it as some, in some other episode of my podcast. But this is basically what it looks like. And um, yeah, it's very cozy and soft because of the brioche. And I think it's, it'll be nice and warm just as one more layer. And because of the black and white, it should fit with a lot of things I have. As I said, maybe not with this dress, but with a lot of other things that I own, I think I can just throw it over and, um, yeah, have a shrug. I don't think I'll knit it again exactly like this. I might try to knit another one with the increases in a straight line. Or maybe I'll think of something completely different. I don't know yet. But I just wanted to let you know that I finally got round to seaming these two seams. And um, this is now properly finished and it can live in my cupboard instead of on my sofa. Yep, so that's that. Um, the proper finished objects I have for this week are the pot holders that I've been crocheting. And I told you I needed to finish them because um, they're going to be picked up tomorrow. So um, they can be um, gifted for a birthday. And uh, I used the yarn held double. I used a light and a dark color for the main part. And then I doubled the dark color for the last few rows. And what I had done is with the first pot holder, I weighed the light yarn. And when I crocheted 25 grams, I cut it and I doubled the dark color so that in the end I would only need three balls of yarn and not four balls of yarn. And it was quite funny. Um, I When I did the second pot holder, I crocheted with the two colors and then of course I had to start a new dark ball of yarn. And then when the light um, yarn was gone, I had one row less than I had on the other pot holder, even though the scale said it was 25 grams. It just goes to show that it's never very exact. So with knitting or crocheting, you always have to keep in mind that things don't always come out 100%. So if I had really wanted it to be exactly the same, I should have stopped with the light color on the first pot holder a bit earlier. But I reckoned it wasn't, it didn't have to be that precise. So one of them has one more row of the dark color doubled and I don't think it shows at all. So I think they're fine the way they are and they're useful and um, the colors are nice so I'm I'm happy with how they turned out so that's finished object number one and then number two are these three tiny little things <laughs> and uh, the socks are the rye socks by tin can knits and I knit the first one weeks if not months ago and then never got around to doing the second one and now I finally finished the second one and then um, because I still had yarn I also knit a little baby hat and that's the Bali hat by Tin Ken Knits. Both the patterns are from the Simple Connect collection and I'll talk about them once more um, at the end of the episode but um, yeah as I finished these um, I just wanted to 
show you now with the finished objects and then I'll talk about the patterns a little more towards the end of the episode. Yeah, so that's that. On to works in progress. I knitted on the socks that I'm knitting, the sock couple. And um, I'm at the second sock for both pairs. And for her sock, I finished knitting the leg and I've just finished knitting the heel. And I still need to do the, uh, the decreases, the, um, what are they called? Um, can't think of it right now, but you know what I mean. So I'll knit the foot and I'll knit decreases until I have the same number of stitches that I had at, on the leg. And then I can finish the whole sock. And um, with his sock, I haven't done quite as much. I'd only just started it last week and I managed to finish the ribbing and I've just started knitting the pattern. So I'll need to knit the leg and then the heel and so on and so on. So these are the two socks that you know and I finally got round to starting the um, brioche sock that I had uh, planned for weeks and weeks. So with that, those two were Opal Sock Yarn Rainbow series, rainbow line, and these are the Schaaf Pate, um colors. So every year Opal comes out with eight new colors for the Schaaf Pate series. And that means that the sheep that uh, grew this wool, they live in Germany. And um, with every ball of yarn that is being sold from this line, um, one euro goes into keeping this kind of keeping sheep in Germany alive and helping them and supporting them. And um, so everything about this yarn has been produced and made and worked on in Germany. And uh, so yeah, that's quite nice. And I really like this color with the pink and yellow. And I am knitting a two color brioche and I'm using this dark gray as a second color, as a contrast color. And this is what it looks like, looks like so far. So I'm knitting the pink one on the outside and the dark one on the inside. And I plan to knit the sock so they're completely reversible and I can choose whether I want to wear a colorful sock or a gray sock, or I could just fold the cuff down so you could see both colors. Um, yeah, and to be, usually brioche always takes a long time because you have to almost knit every row twice to finish the row. And for socks, it tends to take forever. But I have now learned to do the two color, one pass brioche knitting that the sockmetician teaches. And um, that's a fantastic technique and it means I can knit both colors at the same time. So if I knit round the sock once, I've knit both colors and I've knit a whole complete row. And technically I should be able to finish the socks twice as quickly as um, if I do it the normal way. I'm not quite as fast with both yarns at the same time as I would be with one yarn. So I'm not quite double um, as quick, but yeah, I enjoy knitting both the yarns at the same time. And I know the more I do it, the uh, more I get used to it, the quicker it'll be. And then I can do brioche socks that don't take forever. And um, you couldn't, I couldn't knit um, just the leg of the sock in brioche and then do a normal sock with heel and everything. But what I'm planning to do is to not knit a heel because the brioche is so flexible and so elastic. Um, you don't need a heel. You can just put the sock on just like a spiral sock in a way and it'll fit. And the good thing about that is it'll fit any size. And um, so that's the plan with these socks. Yep. Okay, that's that for socks. I worked a bit on the poncho that I'm knitting as a, um, that I'm knitting for the theater, for the Wiesbaden theater. So, um, this is what I've done so far. It's a very thick cotton yarn. And this is the back. And I decided it's long enough now. And I started knitting one of the shoulders. So the plan is to knit 
to finish that shoulder, then knit the other shoulder, then attach the stitches and knit down the front. So it'll be all in one piece. And uh, the plan is also to um, knit buttonholes into the front so I can sew on buttons onto the back and then uh, the poncho will just be buttoned on the sides. It'll be really easy to take on and off. And um, yeah, it's a fairly simple design. Yeah, so I think I always stop once I finish a ball of yarn. Um, they're 100 gram balls, but because they, it's so so thick, it doesn't have a lot of yardage and it's fairly quick to finish one ball and I tend to knit from one ball to the next. Um, but with the, with the shoulder and the shaping of the neck on the front, I think that was another reason I stopped knitting because I couldn't make up my mind how to do that exactly. So that's that. Then I continued knitting on the baby surprise jacket. I am using Opal DK weight sock yarn. And um, I have finished the decreases for those of you who, who've knit the baby surprise jacket before will know what that means. And I've started the increases. And right now I'm at the point where I need to increase stitches uh, between the markers for the back fullness I think is what she calls it and um, so right now the um, rows are still getting longer and longer and um, at some point I will stop increasing and I will start knitting only the stitches between the markers and then it's sort of the home stretch <laughs> but that's how far I got this will have to grow quite a bit this week because I want to get it done as quickly as possible. I want to knit another baby surprise jacket out of um, another Opa sock yarn that's even bigger than the DK. It's probably something like worsted weight or Aran weight. Not quite sure what the difference there is, but I wanted to make two jackets and see how the size differs because the only way to um, change the size of the baby surprise jacket is by using different yarn and different needles. And I wanted to see uh, how much of a difference that uh, will make. And so I hope to finish the two jackets before I need to send one of them off. But I'm not quite sure which one to send yet. Um, and I'll probably inquire um, as to how much the baby has grown already <laughs> to decide which jacket to send. Yep, so that's the baby surprise. Um, I have knit a second piece of the dinosaur kids blanket that I want to do. Um, basically, I should finish the cat blanket first, but I was just so curious to see what this um, dinosaur would look like um, that I couldn't stop myself. So I had already done this, this square without the dinosaur, so every other square will look like this. And then I started the dinosaur. I haven't quite finished it yet. So the eyes that you see, they're just little plastic things that I've put on. Um, they're not going to stay there. I will crochet eyes um, and sew them on. I will also crochet three horns um, that need to be sewn on because it's a Triceratops um, dinosaur. But um, yeah, I just wanted to see how the pattern works and which yarns to use and I'm very happy with um, the colors I've chosen for this one. I plan to do many different colors for the heads. I'm not quite sure how many yet, at least three or four or maybe five. Um, yeah, but now that I've done that, I will really make an effort to work on the cat blanket and to get that um, finished as quickly as possible. But the main priority this week is probably going to be the Carnaby Crochet Along. That's um, a crochet along that the magazine Simply Crochet put out. And if you've seen older episodes of my um, podcast, you'll know that I started crocheting two of the pullovers. And uh, But every time I finished one part of the instructions, I had to wait for the next... Um, uh, for the next... Not episode, but for... <laughs> Uh, for the next brochure to to be published and but now I'm behind um, the the September issue of Simply Crochet has been out for quite a while and I just didn't get around to working on it mainly because of this dress but now this is done 
I should really get to working on, on those pullovers and I hope to be able to show you more pieces next week. So that's all the crochet for today. There's one more knitting project that I can show you and that's my Gemini pullover that we're knitting as a knit along for my channel and uh, in my Ravelry group and I have been very slow in knitting on that but now that I've finished the video tutorials that I wanted to do I can yep, try and finish it more quickly. I transitioned from the light color to the dark color and then I finished knitting the ball of yarn, the, this dark ball of yarn and as I like to do once the color that I'm using, uh, the, the yarn that I'm using here is finished, I will now um, knit the arms first and then finish the front and back. And I plan on knitting short sleeves and the plan right now is to do the same um, transition from one color to the other that I did in the front and back and then once I hit the dark color I will straight go I will go straight into the ribbing and uh, finish the arms that's what I'm planning to do I will when I've knit the transition rows for the first sleeve I will try it on and if it looks good I will do the ribbing if I feel like it needs a bit more length to um, look okay that's what I'll do but I hope to have finished at least one sleeve, maybe both sleeves by next week. Oh, I'm not doing a video next week. So I have two weeks of time. I definitely should finish both the sleeves, maybe even the whole thing in two weeks. Um, but I'll be on another short holiday next week. So there won't be um, a video next Monday. But the next video will come out um, in two weeks time. So I hope to get as much knitting as possible, possible done on this by um, the time I make another video. And the last thing I want to talk about, because I'm, I'm not almost done, it's, it's probably <laughs> saying too much, but I hope to get the um, Gemini pullover done as quickly as possible. And that means we can start another knit along. And... Um, yeah, so the idea is to start the next knit along in October and because I'm not filming next week, the next time I film will be October and my idea was to um, knit all the patterns in the Simple Collection by Tin Can Knits. So nobody has to knit all the patterns but everyone, everybody can knit as many patterns or as few patterns as you like and that's where those two come into play again because both these patterns are from the Simple Collection by Tin Can Knits. And the Simple Collection is a collection of patterns that are all free and they're all fairly easy to do. So you can pick something that you feel comfortable doing or you can pick something that you think might be a bit difficult or a challenge for yourself. And you can try and learn new things. As far as I know, they have um, tutorial videos for all the patterns and um, the first knit along I ever did was the harvest cardigan and that's part of the simple collection as well and I've already knit several versions of the um, of the pullover pattern uh, what's that called um, okay can't think of it right now but I have knit it before and um, for the pullover and for the hat and the socks, there's also a light version where you use four ply yarn, and the, but all the other patterns use the um, the thicker yarn. And you can knit a blanket, you can knit gloves or mittens, you can knit a cowl or a scarf, pullover jacket hat socks I think that's that's about it but you can if you just check the simple collection either on the website by Tin Can Knits or on Ravelry you can see all the patterns and you can start thinking about what you want to do um, I always wanted to knit every pattern at least once to be able to show it here in my shop and to use for teaching and um, I've, I never got around to doing that so I thought during this knit along I will try and do as many of the patterns that I haven't done before as possible and um, yeah so both the hat and the socks I had knit before but I just needed a present for a baby so um, that's what I did but for the knit along I will make sure to knit 
patterns that I haven't done before. Yeah, so that's everything I had to show this week. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.